What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out top 50 worst WWE matches ever by WrestleMania. This should be a very interesting one. This video, uh, it's 36 minutes long, so we're gonna be here for a while. This is this is very interesting for them to narrow down. These are the worst WWE matches ever. This is gonna be uh, quite an interesting one. We're probably gonna go down some memory lane here and uh see what some of the worst matches they deem on their top 50 worst list should be a good one appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channels by wrestling lamia once again link to the original video down below so sit back relax we're gonna go through this together it should be a a great time well maybe you know we have to relive some of these awful matches if there's anything that we can all agree on with wwe there's been some just awful just makes no sense rage inducing channel turning matches and we're gonna see what's the number one in wrestlemania's uh, uh mindset so should be a good one let's get right into this one let's do this thing during the decorated and celebrated history of wwe Woo! there have been some matches that have defined why wwe is the most popular wrestling company in the world Iconic matches such as Ricky Steamboat versus Macho Man Randy Savage from Ooh. WrestleMania 3 and Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker from classic, WrestleMania 25 classic. are just some examples of the most acclaimed matches oh in gosh. WWE history. Unfortunately, there have been those matches which make fans embarrassed to be fans of the WWE product Ooh. as they're utterly atrocious Ooh. and lack any redeemable qualities. Now for a match to qualify for this list, the match in question must be a sanctioned wrestling match, so boxing matches or sumo matches that yeah. have taken place on pay-per-view events don't even qualify. But join us now as we look at one of our biggest videos yet, as we look at the I 50 see. worst matches Woo! in WWE history. We're gonna be here history. for a while, y'all. Should be an interesting one. Going down memory lane with WrestleMania here. <clears throat> be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell subscribe for daily wrestling already. videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 50, Damian Priest versus The Miz at WrestleMania Backlash 2021. Ah. Damian Priest and The Miz are two great wrestlers in their own right, but when they collided in a zombie lumberjack match at the 2021 WrestleMania... I forgot. That was a zombie. I Yeah, that was that match. Wow. You know what? It deserves to be on this list. Mania Backlash event it was a total flop. Yep. The reason for the involvement of the zombies in the match was because WWE was cross-promoting a new movie titled Army of the Dead, but they did little to promote the movie in a positive manner. The match was comical at best, and it featured The Miz and John Morrison being eaten alive by zombies in one of the most unusual visuals ever seen on WWE Deserves to be on this Luckily list. for WWE, the match took place in the Thunderdome in front of zero fans. If it had taken place in front of a capacity crowd, the audible reaction would have been interesting to say the least. Crowd Number 49, Jake the Snake the, Roberts uh, versus Andre the Giant, WrestleMania 5. When Andre time, the Giant man. stepped into the ring with Jake the Snake Roberts at WrestleMania 5, his health was on the decline and he was having great difficulty moving. Roberts tried his best to get a good match out of Andre, but it was a complete mess as Andre was in no fit state to be wrestling. WWE decided to give the match 9 minutes, which was completely irresponsible and was one of the reasons why the match was so bad. Damn. The match would end in a DQ victory for Roberts after Andre decided to attack the guest referee Big John Studd. Meltzer would even give this match a minus 3 star rating, Damn. which accurately summed up how lackluster the match really was. Sheesh. Number 48, Scott Steiner vs Triple H, ah, Royal Rumble 2003. Yeah. Okay, fans were excited when Scott Steiner re-signed uh -huh. with WWE in 2002, but his first pay-per-view match was arguably the worst match of his entire career. Yeah. Steiner would wrestle Triple H for the world title at the Royal Rumble in 2003, and the match was heavily criticized. Steiner wasn't the Steiner of old, and his in-ring work had regressed quite dramatically. The match featured numerous botches and the crowd uh -huh. were actively turning on the match as it seemed to get worse and worse. Yeah. Despite winning by DQ, Steiner's time in the main event scene in WWE would slowly be coming to an end and their rematch between the two the next month at No Way Out was only a slight improvement over the Rumble catastrophe. Yeah. Number 47, Bret Hart vs Vince McMahon. Wrestled you would think this would probably be much better than it was, but it, it no, it wasn't. It, it wasn't at all. 
This deserves to be on the list. Mania 26. <laughs> it was great to see Bret Hart back on WWE yeah. TV in 2010. For sure. But his match with Vince McMahon at WrestleMania 26 was a total letdown. Although it was obvious that Hart was now limited in the ring, the way WWE booked the match was insanely disappointing. Mm -hmm. Hart and McMahon's No Holds Barred match was also a lumberjack match featuring members of the Hart family as lumberjacks. The match was a convoluted bore as WWE tried to pull a swerve and pretend that Hart's family was going to turn on him. Nevertheless, after 9 minutes of solid action, Hart <laughs> finally made McMahon tap out to the sharpshooter. Number 46, Brock Lesnar vs Goldberg, WrestleMania 20. Unfortunately, this on the list too. Of heading into Brock Lesnar vs Goldberg at WrestleMania 20. However, when it leaked online that both men were leaving WWE following Mania, the Madison Square Garden fans immediately turned on both men. The crowd would heckle both men throughout Look the match, that. and this made both former world champions lose focus. Uh -huh. The match featured excessive stalling, and let's face it, the crowd were mainly interested in the antics of guest referee Stone Cold Steve Austin. Of course. Ultimately, Goldberg would get the win in one of the most lifeless matches of the Ruthless Aggression Era. Number 45, Royal Rumble 2015. How could you make a Royal Rumble seem uh. so bad? Oh, oh yeah, he he forgot to put 2015 got 2005 on there. Let me make sure I, I, my eyes is reading that right. It said 2005. How could you make a Royal Rumble seem so bad? Oh, WWE's idea was to present Roman Reigns as the next big thing, but due to terrible booking decisions in the match, the crowd completely turned on him. Yep. They booked the match so fan favorites such as Daniel Bryan and Dean Ambrose looked disposable and Kane uh -huh. and Big Show were presented as top stars in the match despite them being stars of yesteryear. Yep. Even The Rock appearing at the end of the match wasn't enough to save it from being no. the worst received Royal Rumble of all time. Number 44, Finley and Hornswoggle vs that. Boogeyman and Little Boogeyman at No Way Out 2007. This was a thing? <laughs> no Way Out 2007 featured a tag match pitting Finley and Hornswoggle against the sinister duo of the Boogeyman and his smaller self known as Little Boogeyman. The match was 6 minutes in length and didn't remotely warrant a place on the pay-per-view. <laughs> the comedy on display wasn't popular with fans and the finish came when Finley used the dreaded shillelagh on Little Boogeyman to take home the W in a match that nobody really asked for. What Number the 43, hell? Randy Orton vs Jinder Mahal Battleground 2017. <sighs> it's well documented just how disliked Jinder Mahal's WWE title reign was in 2017. Mahal went from job at a main eventer, and Mahal didn't have the credentials or the skills to thrive in this illustrious role. Mahal had some lackluster matches as champion, and his Punjabi prison match with Randy Orton at the Battleground pay-per-view was arguably his very worst. For sure. The two would wrestle a generic match for what seemed like an eternity, and the bamboo cage did little to generate excitement. The finish of the match came when, surprise, surprise, the great Kali randomly returned, randomly. which in turn allowed <laughs> Mahal to escape the structure and retain his title. Number 42, uh. Ivory versus the Fabulous Moolah, No Mercy 1999. Okay. In 1999, WWE decided to make the Fabulous Moolah an active wrestler, noting she was pushing into her late 70s at the time. Moolah would appear in a number of storylines throughout 1999, and she was even joined by Mae Young. The issue was that Moolah's matches were a laughing stock, and it was so bad that Jerry Lawler on commentary would notoriously cry with laughter. But one of the worst <laughs> took place at the 99 No Mercy pay-per-view as Moolah challenged Ivory for the women's title. Although the match was only 3 minutes, it was a truly painful 3 minutes to watch as an elderly Moolah could barely perform a yeah. spot. The crazy thing was that WWE decided to give Moolah the victory and yeah, the women's title that's... as she would roll up Ivory for the victory. What were WWE even thinking? Don't know. Number 41, Team Ivory vs Team Moolah, Survivor Series 1999. Speaking of the fabulous Moolah's 1999 run, it didn't stop there as a pay-per-view match at the Survivor Series was even worse than a No Mercy disaster. Moolah would team with Mae Young, Deborah and Tori to take on the team of Ivory, Jacqueline, Luna and Terry Runnels. WWE evidently had no faith in the women in the match as it lasted under 2 minutes in length. The in-ring action on display wasn't pleasant and Two it greatly match, exposed bro. WWE's <laughs> What's women's the division. Point? <laughs> the finish came when Moolah performed a terrible looking splash on Ivory to once again pin one of the WWE's most credible and talented female performers. Number 40, The Miz vs. Snoop Dogg, WrestleMania Damn. 39. <laughs> one of the impromptu matches of WrestleMania 39 saw The Miz take on Shane McMahon. Sadly, McMahon tore his quad within seconds Jesus of returning, and this forced Christ. WWE to improvise and deliver a match Jesus between Miz and Jesus Christ, bro. 
Oh, I, man. Shane, we 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 know, you know, there there's been times where Shane is, you know, overstepped his bounds and creative decisions. He ain't deserve what happened to him, bro. He ain't deserve that. And then we end up getting this. I, I don't know if I would put this on the list. I mean, it wasn't that good. But at the same time, I think it was it was it was one of those moments where the crowd enjoyed it. It wasn't like the crowd didn't enjoy it. I, I enjoyed seeing Snoop Dogg do that. I think that's kind of what it was, honestly. So I don't know if I would put this on the list. But you know, it's not the it's it, for me. It has to be one to be on this list. The crowd has to also not be into it at all. Just like yeah, get this off my screen. This was this was okay. It's okay. Then WrestleMania host Snoop Dogg, the dog father would punch the Miz twice before delivering a dreadful looking people's elbow to the Miz. <laughs> it was a total def- bro. That people's elbow that he legitimately jumped in that bro. Buckle, but credit should be offered to the Miz and Snoop Dogg for their solid improvisation skills. Number 39, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, WrestleMania 34. Ooh. WrestleMania 34 was main evented by Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns for the Universal title. This match went down as one of the most detested WrestleMania events ever, as fans have noted. This deserves to be on the list because the crowd didn't care. I didn't care. I don't even think I watched this match full through. I think I missed WrestleMania, so I have wa- watched it on replay, and I fast forward through all of this. This was fucking dreadful. Interest bro. in the match, and they had no desire to see a babyface reigns on top. Ugh. The fans would heckle the match with negative chants, and would even chant for other wrestlers who weren't even in the match. The end of the match was a literal L1 basher on a SmackDown game, as Lesnar pinned reigns to retain. Both men knew that the match wasn't well received, and following the match, Lesnar threw his title belt at Vince McMahon in one of the most infamous backstage incidents in WWE history. <laughs> he threw that shit because he didn't give a shit. And Vince is sitting there. <laughs> I want y'all to know only Brock Lesnar and a few other people in WWE history can get away with retaining the championship and throwing it like a sack of potatoes at the boss. The boss is. Don't just back there and hit take the shit. What are you gonna do? He knew that that shit was dog shit, bro. That match was boring. No one cared. It even with them, I don't know, maybe they called an audible because I remember them busting Roman getting busted open hard way. But it, it it didn't matter. No one cared. They tried to get that sim knowing nothing worked. <laughs> Number 38, The Royal Family vs. Clowns R Us, Survivor Series 1994. I was a little baby the at this point. The Survivor Series featured one of the worst traditional Survivor Series matches of all time. Jerry the King Lawler had a team of royal midgets who would take on Doink the Clown and his team of midget clowns. I did clowns. hear about this one. This match well, was everything that this. was wrong with WWE uh. in the mid-90s, as Vince McMahon genuinely believed that this is what the fan base wanted to see. No! It lasted for a lifetime, coming in at 16 minutes in Ooh. length, and after about 30 seconds, the crowd obviously became disinterested Look and had no desire to emotionally invest in WWE's idea of comedic wrestling. Lawless team managed to get the win with all of his team surviving the match. This was a showcase of how not to deliver a traditional Survivor Series match, and it was utterly appalling. Number 37, Awful. The Brothers of Destruction vs. DX, Crown Jewel 2018. Never watched this match all the way Michaels through, and I'm glad I didn't. Seen so many clips of it. decision in 2018, he agreed to come out of retirement for no. one final match in Saudi Arabia Wish at the he Crown didn't. Jewel event. Wish he HBK didn't. would team with Triple H to take on Kane and The Undertaker, and the match was so bad that HBK has since distanced himself from the match entirely. You have to. Let's face it, this match was four men way past their prime trying to relive their golden years, and it wasn't a smart idea, as there were so many botches in the match, and Triple H even came out with the match with a serious injury. Yep. Now, okay, HBK was offered a considerable amount of money to take part in the match, so his reasons for agreeing to wrestle again were purely financial. Did the poor quality of the match itself alter HBK's legacy? Well, not really, but yeah. it did impact the compelling story WWE had told with HBK's initial retirement back in 2010. I'm telling you, it, 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 uh, I wish he would have stayed retired. That 
Triple H, not Triple H, HBK, Undertaker, their, their little mini rivalry they had at the end of HBK's career was the perfect send-off. Had two legendary back-to-back -back matches at WrestleMania around that time. It was the perfect send-off. Nothing he would ever be able to do coming back would top what they did. Perfect send off. Wish he never would have came back. Not Number for Number 36, just, nah, Booker T versus stay Buck Bagwell, retired. Raw July 2nd, 2001. Definitely should stay retired. When WWE purchased WCW in 2001, initial plans were to see WWE bring back WCW as its own entity. The pilot for this concept took place in July of 2001 as a main event portion of Raw would be turned into a WCW centered show. The main event saw Booker T take on Buff Bagwell and the match stunk so bad that Vince McMahon scrapped any plans for a WCW revival. Damn. The fans in attendance just wanted to see WWE stars. The fans hadn't paid money to see WCW, so it was a short-sighted move on the part of McMahon. Uh -huh. In relation to Buff Bagwell, this match shattered his reputation and he would be released from WWE shortly after. Damn. However, for Booker T, he worked his way up to the top of WWE and is considered one of the greatest performers of all time. For sure. Go the Hall of Famer would discuss the impact of the match during an appearance on the Not Sam podcast, and this is what he had to say. I knew that was a bad night when it was over. I knew it wasn't our greatest moment. We got pulled into the office immediately, and we told it wasn't our best night. I said, put me in the ring with anybody. The smell will go away real quick. <laughs> and to be fair to Booker, it did. It did. <laughs> 35, The Undertaker vs. The Dudley Boys, The Great American Bash 2004. WWE had some lackluster pay-per-view events in 2004, but The Great American Bash was arguably their very worst. Hardly any of the matches on the pay-per-view card delivered, and the main event was a confusing mess. It saw The Undertaker take on the Dudley Boys in a handicapped concrete crypt match. <laughs> yeah, that match has never returned, thankfully. They had an added stipulation yeah. that if The Undertaker didn't forfeit the match and purposely lose, Paul Bearer would be I forgot that's what it was called, but I know the infamous scenario. Let's think of Paul Bearer being buried alive, but it's just the name, the concrete crypt match, bro. <laughs> Once again, I gotta tell y'all, bro. It wasn't all sunshine and daisies <laughs> back in the day in wrestling. It just wasn't. There was some cringe, nonsensical matches as well. Buried in real cement. Ataka eventually won a 17-minute match, which was completely lifeless as the crowd just didn't understand the stipulation and the in-ring action wasn't at the level fans wanted out of a WWE pay-per-view main event. In one of the most baffling, illogical moves WWE have ever delivered, they decided to have the dead man pull a lever to release cement on Paul Bearer. They seemingly killed off the dead man's longtime manager and friend, but the match was an undeniable failure and it didn't remotely warrant a pay-per-view main event slot. Number 34, Hornswoggle vs. The Soaring Eagle, Smackdown December 10th, 2010. In late 2010, WWE decided to book a TV feud between Hornswoggle and Jack Swagger's Soaring Eagle. This mind-numbing feud culminated in one of the worst oh matches of 2010, boy. and it took place on SmackDown. The match featured spots such as Hornswoggle throwing bird seeds at the Eagle and Hornswoggle putting seasoning on the Eagle's foot. He managed to get the win, putting an end to a few minutes of complete misery. Number 33, Brothers of that deserved to be on this list. Destruction vs. Chronic, Unforgiven 2001. A taker was instrumental in bringing Chronic into WWE in 2001. The dead man had a thriving friendship with Brian Adams, and this led to Vince McMahon agreeing to bring the former WCW team into the company for a run. Taker would team with his demonic half brother Kane to defend the WCW tag titles against Chronic at the Unforgiven pay per view in 2001. The match was so poor that they sent both members of Chronic to developmental. Jeez. This must have been incredibly frustrating and embarrassing for Taker as he vouched for Chronic and they had let him down in a major pay per view showcase. Hell. Number 32 Diesel vs. The British Bulldog in Your House 4. One WWE title match in 95 was so bad that Vince McMahon threw down his headset after the match and it surprisingly featured two more than capable performers. The In Your House 4 event was headlined by the British Bulldog challenging Diesel for the WWE title. 
the 18 minute match without question is the most lifeless, boring and uninspiring pay-per-view main Damn. event WWE have ever delivered. They couldn't even end the match in a conclusive manner as Bret Hart interfered giving the DQ win to the Bulldog. Damn. Number 31, Rick Rude vs Jake the Snake Roberts, WrestleMania 4. Rick Rude and Jake the Snake Roberts are celebrated wrestlers, but their match at WrestleMania 4 wasn't at the level WWE fans expected out of the two prolific performers. The two would wrestle in a 15 minute draw in a match that dragged and dragged and had zero substance or life. Damn. Jake Roberts would later discuss how poor the match was on his podcast, and this is what he had to say. I blew up watching it. It sucked. <laughs> WrestleMania 4 Damn. had the worst booking ever. That's the problem. Now, also, the Wrestling Observer Radio would award the match a minus two star rating. Not a minus it, according two. According to Meltzer, one of the most disastrous matches in all of WWE. Number 30, Brock Lesnar versus Braun Strowman, mm. Crown Jewel 2018. This deserve the to be here too. For Crown Jewel 2018, oh, where Roman Reigns defend the Universal Title against Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman. But when Reigns was forced to relinquish his Universal Title, the match became a standard one v one. Instead of giving fans a world title worthy pay-per-view match, yeah. they decided to book the match as if it was a Raw segment. The match began with Baron Corbin attacking Strowman with the Universal title belt and then Lesnar hitting several F5s to win the vacant title. This was utter <sighs> laziness on the part of WWE and the social media reaction to this match was incredibly negative yeah. but ultimately completely justified. Number 29, The Great Khali vs Kane, WrestleMania 23. Eesh. The Great Khali has never been known for being a top tier in ring <laughs> worker, and his match at WrestleMania. We gotta look at that pedigree again, bro. Was that was negative, awful, bro. <laughs> look at Number it. Number 29, he The just, Great Khali versus he didn't even Kane jump, at WrestleMania. He just look at the it. Khali has never been known for being a top tier. Bro, he, bro, he barely jumped. He just. <laughs> ring worker, and his match at WrestleMania 23 was a testament to this. Carly would collide with Kane in the single worst match on the acclaimed WrestleMania card. Mm -hmm. the two this was a good world WrestleMania. Champions had zero chemistry whatsoever, and the match Love would this barely be passable as a match on even SmackDown. Carly managed to get the win, which completely deflated the crowd as they had no interest in seeing Carly come out with a W, especially on the grand stage of WrestleMania. Yeah. Number 28, Vince McMahon versus Pat McAfee, <laughs> WrestleMania 38. <laughs> this was Once a Pat thing, McAfee bro. had defeated Austin Theory at WrestleMania this 38, was a thing. Vince McMahon shockingly challenged McAfee to an impromptu matchup. This was a sight to behold, and it would become McMahon's final match. Despite defeating Theory moments earlier, McAfee wasn't able to overcome McMahon as McMahon kicked a football in McAfee's face, giving him a WrestleMania victory. <laughs> yeah, when you think about it, it don't make a lick of sense. I guess you can technically put this on there. I guess. I mean, it, it did get a, a pop out of the crowd, so I don't know. Because the crowd seemed to somewhat care about this because it was Vince McMahon out there wrestling. I'm like, what? So I, I get it from an actual match standpoint. No, but the crowd actually gave a damn. So I don't know if I would have put this as one of the worst matches, but he definitely did take one of the worst stunners of all time. This was really confusing as a viewer, as it was evident from watching it that McMahon had no business having a match on a WrestleMania card at Facts. this stage of his career. Number 27, The Undertaker vs. Big Boss Man, WrestleMania 15. Understandable. WrestleMania 15 featured a truly underwhelming Hell in a Cell showdown yeah. between The Undertaker and Big Boss Man. The match was met with utter silence from the crowd as both men were in theory heels, so they had no idea who they were supposed to be rooting for. Yeah. After Taker pinned Big Boss Man after a strenuous, boring matchup, the dead man alongside the brood proceeded to place a noose around <laughs> Boss wild. Man's neck and raise him along with a Hell in a Cell structure. This seemingly had killed off the boss man in a live execution on the biggest yeah, pay per view event of the year. It was wild. 26, Eva Marie vs. Alexa Bliss, Holy. SummerSlam 2021. Now, Eva Marie had a rotten reputation as an in ring talent, and her second run in WWE was arguably even worse than her <laughs> initial run. She would be given a push in the summer of 2021, and this culminated in the match at SummerSlam with the talented Alexa Bliss. The match featured Marie going through the motions whilst Bliss was doing her best to try and get a decent match out of her. It was only 4 minutes in length which was about 3 minutes too long <laughs> as Marie Damn. looked completely lost in the match. By the summer of 2021, WWE had gone to a point in their history where matches such as Marie vs Bliss didn't need to take place. Yeah. Number 25, Brock Lesnar vs Kofi Kingston, SmackDown. This deserves to be here. 
Oh my god, this this deserves to be here. It's all, it's pretty high up on the list too. Like, you know how some people be like, if you had a time machine, what would you do? This is one of those moments. Go back in time and you, uh, I don't know. You take care of the Vince situation. <laughs> not to hurt him, not to hurt him, but he doesn't come to the show. In fact, in fact, he just decides to not book Kofi like that. They actually have a match where Kofi may look like he can win. I get it. Obviously, Brock will probably still win. But have Kofi actually fight with some heart, damn it. Give him 25 minutes or something. That's just me. And Vince would have made that decision. Right, Vince? <laughs> Down October 4th, 2019. <laughs> Kofi Kingston capturing the WWE title at WrestleMania 35 was a very special moment. S However, great moment. when they announced that Kingston would be defending the title against Brock Lesnar on SmackDown's 20th anniversary show, everyone was expecting Kingston to lose. Yeah. But we thought that Kingston would put up a fight. Fight, thank nobody you. Nobody expected Kingston to be squashed in just eight seconds. It was a complete disservice to Kingston and his fan base, and the fact that WWE didn't believe Kingston deserved to be dethroned in a full-length match was insanely disappointing. Messed up, bro. Number 24, Brock Lesnar vs. Cain Velasquez, well, also be on there too. One of the reasons why Brock Lesnar squashed Kofi Kingston so convincingly on the 20th anniversary edition of SmackDown was so they could set up a match between Lesnar and Cain Velasquez for the Crown Jewel event. Which is stupid. Whilst Velasquez was a big deal in UFC, WWE fans had no interest in seeing him wrestle, especially when he was virtually taking Kingston's spot. Yeah. The match between Lesnar and Velasquez was unbelievably poor, and it lasted over a minute, and it finished when Lesnar made his rival tap out. They completely misjudged how Velasquez would be received, and the match itself was one of the most lackluster WWE title yeah. matches of all time. Number 23, The Oddities vs. Kai and Tai, SummerSlam 1998. SummerSlam 98 featured some stellar matches as Triple Awful. H vs. The Rock in a ladder match and The Undertaker vs. Stone Cold Steve Austin for the WWE title. The pay-per-view also featured one of the most ridiculous matches to ever take place <laughs> at the sacred grounds of Madison Square Garden. The oddities would take on Kai and Tai in a handicap match and the wrestling on offer was unbearably bad. Most of the wrestling on display was comedic and one of the most infamous spots in the match saw the oddities retrieve Yamaguchi-san's stinky trainer. The oddities eventually got the win in a 10 minute encounter, but the match should have been relegated to Sunday Night Heat. Facts. Number 22, The Undertaker vs. Giant Gonzalez. Yep. Throughout his iconic WWE career, Taker was given the tough task of getting a number of talents over that didn't have any in ring skills, mm -hmm. and one of these was Giant Gonzalez. The Deadman and Gonzalez would collide at WrestleMania 9 in the easily the worst suit, match of bro. Undertaker's beloved WrestleMania streak. Gonzalez couldn't do anything in the ring, so Taker had to attempt to make the match work against a virtually immobile opponent. <laughs> With a body we were insistent on getting the truly awful wrestler over, and they wouldn't even allow Taker to get the pinfall victory. Instead, he got a DQ win. Taker would reflect on working with <laughs> Gonzalez during an interview on the Not Sam podcast, and this is what he had to say. Oh my, that was the worst. Hideous. <laughs> the whole thing took years off my career. I would be in much better shape now if I could have skipped that one program. Damn. As physically demanding as it was, it was twice the mental strain because you got Brett's there, now Yoko is there. All these guys are going out there and having these great matches. Obviously, you want to be mentioned in the same breath with those guys. Mm -hmm. It was just not possible. It was survival every night, just trying to figure out what he could do. And at that time, I didn't sell a lot and bump around, but man. I was flopping and just trying to make chicken salad out of chicken crap. <laughs> Number 21, Yokozuna vs. King Mabel in your house 4. A WWE ambitiously decided to book Yokozuna vs. Mabel for in your house 4. Mabel was notoriously terrible in the ring, whilst Yoko at this stage of his career unfortunately struggled to have a decent match unless he was wrestling an elite talent. The match itself was even worse than fans expected as the two super heavyweights looked exhausted in just seconds. Damn. It looked like the two just didn't want to be there. WWE did the smart thing in keeping the match short to just five minutes in length, but the match would end in a double countout, which left fans completely underwhelmed. <laughs> Number 20, Diesel vs. King Mabel, SummerSlam 95. 
And speaking of King Mabel, 95 was a great year for him. Mabel had just won the 95 King of the Ring and would challenge Diesel for the WWE title at SummerSlam. This match was a clear sign that Mabel wasn't a main eventer as Diesel worked endlessly in the match to try and get the crowd into the action. Mabel just wasn't at that level and he was arguably a danger to others in the ring. This was seen when Mabel mm -hmm. recklessly hurt Diesel's back in the match and his conduct in the pay-per-view main event was so bad and so careless that Vince McMahon had to be talked out of firing him. Damn. Number 19, John Cena vs. John Laurinaitis Ooh. Over the Limit 2012. Oh, yeah. Although the Over the Limit pay-per-view in 2012 featured a WWE title People showdown power. between Punk and Daniel Bryan, <laughs> They made a controversial call for the main event of the show to feature John Cena taking on authority figure John Laurinaitis. Stupid. The match featured Cena humiliating Laurinaitis for 17 minutes straight and it didn't make for entertaining viewing and it no. was completely wrong that this was picked to be main eventing this show. It should not have main What was particularly it. frustrating about the match was that Laurinaitis got the win thanks to interference from the big show. WWE had to be so reserved in allowing talent to defeat Cena on pay-per-view, but they were willing to give the honor to a non-wrestler. It was completely baffling. Yeah. Number 18, Big Boss Man vs. Al Snow, Unforgiven 1999. We're almost at the, the top 10. Unforgiven pay-per-view, they would introduce a brand new match type called a kennel from hell. This match uh, incorporated yeah. a steel cage around Didn't by work. a hell in a cell, and on the outside of the ring were rabid dogs. That weren't rabid. The match, which was contested between Big Boss Man and Al Snow, was a total flop, as everything went wrong. The dogs around the ring were absolutely terrified to be out there in front of thousands of fans. They would cry, urinate, defecate, and even mate outside of the ring. Snow <laughs> Wait, the a, only wait a minute, the dogs is getting ill. <laughs> Oh shit, I'm nervous, but you looking good. Come here. Hey, yo, they supposed to be attacking and looking vicious. They getting it on right now. Match, and it's unlikely that the match will ever return. <laughs> Wait Number a minute, 17, bro. Hold the on, bush hold on. Snow was a total <laughs> flop as everything went wrong. The dogs around the ring were absolutely terrified to be out there in front of thousands of fans. They would cry, urinate, defecate, and even mate outside of the ring. <laughs> Snow holds the distinction of winning the first and only Kennel from Hell match, and it's unlikely that the match will ever return. Please don't. Number 17, The Bushwhackers vs. The Fabulous Rougeos, WrestleMania 5. WrestleMania 5 featured one of the lowest rated matches in the history of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Damn. The match was between Hall of Famous The Bushwhackers and The Fabulous Rougeos. The match featured spots which were designed to be comedic but were frustrating to watch and the lack of selling on display was enough to break the illusion of pro wrestling. The match was horrendous and oh completely gosh. deserves the minus four star rating that Dave Meltzer <laughs> awarded the minus match. Minus four. <laughs> Number 16, Steven Richards versus Tyson Tomko, Unforgiven 2004. One of the issues with brand exclusive pay-per-view events is that WWE don't always have enough talent to stretch out a three-hour broadcast. Uh -huh. This was evident in 2004 when WWE presented the Unforgiven pay-per-view. During the first portion of the show, Tyson Tomko would wrestle Steven Richards, who just so happened to be in drag. This embarrassment of a match lasted six minutes before Tomko got the win, and would be a questionable match for Sunday Night Heat, never mind an event which fans yeah. were paying money to witness. What was the point? Number 15, Rosie O'Donnell vs. Donald Trump, Raw January 8th, 2007. This was a thing. In an attempt to cash in on the real-life celebrity warfare, WWE decided to book two celebrity impersonators in a match on Raw in 2007. Uh, a Donald Trump impersonator would okay. take on Rosie yeah. O'Donnell impersonator, and the results weren't great. The crowd heavily booed the horrendous action on display, and whilst this was a design to build towards Trump's involvement at WrestleMania 23, the match was an example of, of what the ruthless aggression audience didn't want to see. Just Number 14, cringe, bro. Jackie Gator and Chris Nowinski versus Trish Stratus and Bradshaw, Raw July 8, 2002. Many fans would label the tag match featuring Jackie Gator and Chris Nowinski versus Stratus and Bradshaw as the worst match in Raw history. <laughs> Whilst this is a subjective stance, it's easy to see why a strong portion of the fan base hold this opinion. The match was filled with botches and problems, and most of them were the fault of Gator, who wasn't ready for a match on Raw and should have been nowhere near a WWE ring at this stage of her career. Once Stratus got the win for a team, Jim Ross on commentary would declare that the match had bowling shoe tendencies, implying that the match was indeed ugly. <laughs> Number 13, Seth Rollins vs. Bray Wyatt, Hell in a Cell 2019. Ooh, this almost made top 10. And this definitely 
deserves to be on here. It is arguably one of, if not the worst Hell in a Cell ever. Ever. It's awful. Just straight garbage. The most loathed Hell in a Cell match ever took place in 2019. Deserves to be on this Brian list. Wyatt. The match bizarrely ended in a no contest as the referee declared Rollins' conduct inside the cell as too far and this negatively impacted what? the credibility of the Hell in a Cell match type. The booking of the match was so bad that fans audibly turned on Rollins, who was yep. WWE's top babyface at the time. They were even forced to turn Rollins heel. Yep. Rollins has spoken at length about how WWE missed the mark with the match and it's likely that way it feels the very same way. Number 12, Caitlyn vs. Maxine, NXT, We're almost at the top 10, October 18th, 2010. Man. The all-female season of NXT quickly turned it into a laughing stock, as the quality of the in-ring action was atrocious. Eventually, WWE gave up on the season, and they had Michael Cole and Josh Matthews <laughs> on commentary turn on every match by outright mocking the women competing. The match between Caitlyn and Maxine on October 19th, 2010's edition of the show was a terrible look for WWE as it featured horrible wrestling yeah. and even Cole on commentary calling it the worst segment he's ever been a part of. Damn. 90% of the booths were botched and Maxine took home the win as Cole and Matthews labeled the match as horrible at ringside. <laughs> Number 11, Pat Patterson vs. Gerald Briscoe, King of the Ring 2000. Whilst the duo Pat Patterson and Gerald Briscoe were incredibly entertaining during the Attitude Era, nobody was seeking a pay-per-view match between the two. At the 2000 King of the Ring event, the two collided in an evening gown match for the hardcore title. This match was the last full-length match of both of their respective careers, and it was a terrible way to go out. The two legends wore women's clothing and proceeded to perform dreadful spots for three whole minutes. The only highlight came when Crash Holly hijacked the match and walked out with the hardcore title due to the 24-7 rule being in full effect. Oh my Number gosh. 10, Lars Sullivan vs. Lucha House Party, Super <laughs> Showdown 2019. <laughs> During WWE's attempt to make Lars Sullivan the next top heel in the company, they decided to have him face all members of the Lucha House Party at the Super Showdown event in 2019. This match was designed to showcase Sullivan in the best manner, but he wasn't exactly Shawn Michaels in the ring, so the match quickly fell apart. In one of the strangest booking moves in recent memory, they decided to have the villain of Sullivan get the win via DQ. How this was supposed to make Sullivan look legit is anyone's guess. <laughs> Number 9, Tyson up. Fury vs. Braun Strowman, Crown Jewel 2019. Uh, uh. WWE securing Tyson Fury for a match in 2019 was a huge deal. Fury was one of the biggest names in sport, and now all eyes were on WWE. I forgot this he was a thing, Braun too. He would face Braun Strowman at the Crown Jewel event, and the match was heavily panned. Strowman wasn't experienced enough to carry Fury to a decent match, and Fury was insanely sloppy in the ring. The match came to a close when Fury won via countout, which put an end to one of the most disappointing celebrity versus wrestler matches in WWE history. <laughs> Number 8, Ariel and Kevin Thorne versus Kelly Kelly and Mike Knox, December to Dismember 2006. The WWE's attempted relaunch of ECW in 2006 didn't exactly go to plan, and mm -hmm. their ECW exclusive pay-per-view title December to Dismember was a complete and utter flop. The show itself featured one of the worst received WWE matches of all time as Kelly Kelly teamed with Mike Knox to take on Kevin Thorne and Ariel. The interring action between Thorne and Knox was fine, but when Kelly and Ariel collided, it was an utter train wreck. <laughs> it was truly amateur hour for the ECW brand and the poor quality on offer was even openly mocked by Joey Styles and Taz on commentary. Number 7, Bailey vs. Alexa Bliss, Extreme Ooh, Rules 2017. Damn. WWE failed to understand how to book Bailey as a baby face on the main roster. Oh, this came man. full circle at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view in 2017. Bailey would wrestle Alexa Bliss in a kendo stick on a pole match, and the match is arguably one of the worst matches of the modern era. The entire match revolved around Bailey's reluctance to use the kendo stick, and it absolutely sucked the life out of the arena. Fans yeah, bro, it's just use it's part of the match. Just use the damn kendo stick. I that it it makes you not want to like her character because it's like, bro, they just make baby face baby faces in WWE just complete idiots. <laughs> Hated the match as it completely killed any credibility Bailey had as a compelling character. Bliss would eventually get the win, but following the match, it was hard for WWE to rebuild Bayley as someone that the fans should even care about. Yeah. Number 6, Goldust vs. The Ultimate Warrior in Your House 7. 
Vince McMahon hoped that bringing back the Ultimate Warrior in 96 would see fans come back to the WWE product, but it did nothing remotely positive for the company. Warrior's horrible match with Goldust at the In Your House 7 was a great showcase of why Warrior in WWE wasn't working. The match began with Goldust being chased out of the ring by Warrior and Goldust proceeded to stall for several minutes. Warrior then took possession of Goldust's robe and the director's chair, which prompted Goldust to enter the ring to retrieve his items. In a bizarre scene, Goldust would then put on his robe, sit in his chair and present his hand for Warrior to kiss. Warrior would then burn Goldus's hand with a cigar and clothesline him out of the ring. <laughs> what the Goldus hell? Then fled the scene and was counted out. This wasn't a match that belonged on pay-per-view. What was the and point? It was an utter disrespect that WWE believed that fans should have had to pay to witness this abysmal effort. <laughs> Number five, Miss WrestleMania Battle Royal, WrestleMania uh, 25. Yeah. On paper, the Miss WrestleMania Battle Royal at WrestleMania 25 was a great idea. It would allow WWE to showcase women of the past, present, and future. But in reality, it exposed how little WWE cared about their women's division. They, cared, they did All not. All the women care. in the match came down to the ring as a collective unit, meaning nobody could tell who was in the match. The match featured the likes of Sonny, Tori Wilson, and Molly Holly, Fucking but it was impossible to spot them unless the commentary team referenced them. Uh, the match Santino. was eventually won by Santino Morella in track, using the name Santina. Unfortunately, WWE had more interest in obtaining cheap laughs instead of delivering something special for their women's division and all the women involved Awful. deserved better. Awful. Hopefully one day they'll redo this match, but this time give the women the respect they truly deserve. Just, just awful. Number four, John Cena versus Michael Cole on <laughs> Raw June 4th, 2012. <laughs> the June 4th, 2012 edition of Raw featured a main event pitting John Cena against commentator Michael Cole. Michael Cole was unbearable this horrible at this matchup time. featured cringeworthy comedy that was an insult to the viewers watching at home. The match featured Cena embarrassing Cole as much as possible and doing things such as stripping Cole down to his underwear and pouring JR's barbecue sauce all over him. Yeah, nice plug. The match was booked with an intention of making Vince McMahon laugh as a lot of the spots in the match incorporated McMahon's questionable humor, but the audience weren't laughing. Yeah. The only thing that they were doing was reaching for the remote. Yeah. Number three, Tory vs. Sable, WrestleMania 15. A Sable was never the best in-ring worker in the world, and a match at WrestleMania 15 was evidence of this. Sable collided with Tori for the women's title in one of the worst matches of the Attitude Era. Sable went through the five minutes with a clear reluctance to take any bumps whatsoever, and Tori barely had any experience in the ring, so it was a recipe for complete disaster. Michael Cole on commentary would address how Tori had little experience, but this did little to justify where the match was taking place. Sable managed to get the win thanks to the Sable Bomb in what was without question a low point in the history of the women's title. Jeez. Number two, Goldberg vs. The Undertaker, <laughs> Super Showdown 2. This made number two worst match of all time. I can't get mad at it. It's a match I never watched all the way through. And I'm glad I didn't. Mm -mm. 2019. I've only seen highlights and clips. Time, Goldberg vs. The Undertaker was a dream match. Oh, for but sure. By the time WWE booked the match in 2019, Far from it both men point. had retirement on the horizon. Yeah. The match took place at the Super Showdown event, and it would eventually become one of the most criticized and ridiculed matches in pro wrestling history. The match featured too many botches to count, and it even featured the dead man being dropped on oh his head. Oh my gosh. It was an utter miracle that both men didn't come out of the match with serious life-threatening injuries. The match was going so poorly that it looked like the dead man called an audible and decided to perform a choke slam that to that end the match didn't early. Even look good. In the months that followed, both men would respond publicly to the negative feedback to the match, and both would address how the match wasn't exactly their finest outing. Yeah, talk about obvious. Yeah. And number one, Jerry the King Lawler versus Michael Cole <laughs> at WrestleMania 27. <laughs> Heading into WrestleMania 27, fans uh, had low expectations. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I can understand this, why this would be number one, because this, this was not good at all. Honestly, I probably would have put the, the Undertaker Goldberg at number one, I definitely would have probably put that one at number one. In my list, I definitely would have. But just, just Jerry the King Lawler versus Michael awful. Cole. Any excitement was coming from the fact that Stone Cold Steve Austin was acting as the guest referee for the match, but even this failed to generate any substantial buzz. 
The match itself was a total disaster, mm -hmm. and it had no place being on a WrestleMania card, and the fact that WWE devoted over 13 minutes to the match was a complete spit in the face to the talent when booked on the show. Yeah. The match was and remains universally hated by fans, and even Vince McMahon himself detested the match so much that he labelled the match as the worst thing he's ever seen. Even stranger about the match was that it had an inconclusive finish, as Cole won by DQ, and this led to the feud continuing for several unbearable months following WrestleMania 27. But there you have it, folks. How are you going to sit up there and say, ah, this is one of the worst matches I've ever seen? You booked it! I have to calm down for a second. He booked the match, y'all. Whatever shows up on WrestleMania, he has final say, so he definitely did back then. So how did, how can you say, oh, this is awful? You booked it. Oh. Hey, man. What can you do? Comment down below. Let me know, man. What do you guys feel like is the worst WWE match of all time? If you haven't seen it on this list, what do you feel like is the worst? Like, it's your, like, when someone even mentions the match, you immediately cringe. Like, you just, you immediately don't even want to talk about it or you're not, or anything like that. Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support. Roll to 150K, and I am still getting the speed of YouTube Wrestling Champion World. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.